So this is part two of how to create a Hoover crosshair label and chart in Chart.js 4. So what we're going to do now is add up here the label text. So I'm going to scroll down here. And as I scroll down here, we have what we call the, or maybe the cloud bubble. So to make this, what I need to do is of course create a new shape here. So I'm going to say here, uh, begin path. And then what I want to do here, or probably what you can do here, Bob, is ctx.restore to undo all what we did above. So we have at least that one, but then here we're going to start to create a new shape. So this shape here, we'll just grab this color as the background color. So I'm going to, instead of stroke style, I'll say fill style. So it will be a gray color. And then what I want to do here is make a rectangle shape that we can even convert into a rounded shape. This is very nice. So we're going to say here ctx dot uh, round rectangle so we can make rounded borders and basically here we have the x the y the width the height and the radius so you can imagine if you put radius of zero it will be a nice rectangle if it's higher it will get the border uh, rounded borders on the corners so where do we need to position our x well basically we need to go here and this is the right side so then once we did this, we need to have the Y value, which is basically just this value here. Then we need to calculate the width. For the width, I am going to use a special trick later on. For now, I'm going to say 20 pixels. For the height, we can do here 20 pixels as well. If I save this, refresh, and of course nothing works. Why? I need to say ctx.fill to draw the rock the rounded rectangle save refresh there we are so you can see here it is in here but i need to move it up how much i need to need to move it up is based on the height so in this case i need to say on the height it need to go up 10 pixels so it's exactly in the center so to do that to push a value up we go into the negatives why because up is zero down is the uh, highest value so there we are so if I refresh now and do a minus, minus 10, it works nicely. Now here's something very nice. If I do this, you can see here it changes it into a circular shape. So let's do it four pixels. So we have a very basic, nice round item. Of course, what about our width? What about our text? If it's larger, how will this work? So we need to calculate that. For that, I'm going to first work on the static text, and then we're going to combine the width to calculate the length of that value or text. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say here, uh, basically the same, ctx.begin path, just to be sure, although I think it's not even necessary to be honest for the text, probably don't even need this. What I do need is ctx.font, and I'm going to indicate what is our font type. Let's make it bold, 12 pixels sans serif. So once I did this, then what I want to do here is uh, the color, I guess, ctx.fill style. And let's give it a white color. So we have a gray uh, item here, or background, so a white uh, font type is perfect. Next, what I want to do now is to fill up the text. So I say ctx.fill text, and then put in here whatever the text would be, the white, uh, sorry, the x coordinate and the y coordinates. So once we did this, we can start working on it. So how do we do this or what is exactly the item? I need to be here in the center, but to test this, let's put in, we expect the value to be 21. And I guess we could even grab this value here, uh, not specifically the get pixel. I guess this would probably be the position on the Y. However, just only this part here, which is the exact data point of number 21, will be in here. So probably we can even uh, shorten this code by putting in here maybe the position or the value, something like that. I'll leave it for now, but if I refresh, we should see something, but I don't see anything. And the reason why is the X has not been assigned. So where do we need to go? We need to go to the right side, but probably we need to do some adjustments. So far, this looks all right, but not really. And to be honest, when I look at this now, I realize that maybe we should start, uh, we should put this on top of the data set. You can see this circle here is somehow 
blocking it. So that would mean instead of before, having an after would maybe make more sense. There you are. It's slightly more readable. I'll like that more, so I'll leave it like that. What I want to do is I want to push this to the right side. So to do this, what I first want to do is want to make sure that we say ctx dot text align and let's push it first to the center and see if it will go nicely in the center. If I save that refresh, basically it goes in the center of the position we assigned to. So that would mean that we need to know now what is the width of this item here. Well, since we know that we assigned here the width of 20, we could basically say here the half of that width would be uh, 10. So what we can do here on the right side plus 10 in width, save, there we are. Of course, this is not what I want to do. Although the position is good, but now we have a still a static value of 20. What, hap what happened if your value is 1000? Then it will not fit. So what I'm going to do now is grab this specific text here. This text, we're going to put it here up. I'm going to say here constant text width. We're going to calculate the text width and the canvas has a built-in functionality for this. So that's really wonderful. So all we're going to say here is ctx measure text, put in the text here and then we say here, I want to measure the width in pixels. By doing this, I can grab this here and then we say here, this is the width because this one is the height. There we are. You could basically also grab the height if ever you need it. But the width is fine for us because we have a 12 pixel item. So if I do this, you can see here it will work, but it's really tiny because it will call it exact of that. So that will mean that I need to have some padding on the left and right. To do that, all I will do here, just say here, maybe 12 pixels in padding. Save that. There we are. That looks quite nice. Maybe even 10 pixels will be fine, I think. We do it like that. That's all right as well. That looks quite decent. So this would mean whatever our text width is, we need to recalculate that because we did here the, the y, uh, where is that? This is the uh, right side here. Um, uh, sorry, no, I need to make sure we go in the text. So I'm going to scroll down here. On the right, we said here plus 10, but what I will do here now is instead of plus 10, I'll say plus the text width divided by two, basically, with division, it will give already priority, but I will just emphasize the priority here. So now we have that emphasized nicely. So if I save this, refresh, you can see here now it is nicely in the center. And that looks absolutely phenomenal. So this is the first part, of course. Next, we're going to start working on the Hoover effect. So let's start to work on that one in the next video.